So to get started, Thomas, do you want to tell us what is Cilium Service Mesh? Absolutely. Let's do that. And I will share actually the blog I've written and we'll go through that because it had some, has some nice pictures in it. So what is a service mesh? We'll start very broad, high level first and then go into what is unique about Cilium Service Mesh. So what is a service mesh? A service mesh essentially is a technology that looks at providing connectivity between services and then in addition provide observability, security, traffic management and resilience. So this cloud in the middle, this service mesh cloud, this is kind of the attempt to provide all of this transparently. So let's look into what it actually means, like what does observability, what type of security, what type of traffic management. So first of all, we want resilient connectivity. So we want connectivity that if something goes wrong, it should retry, right? Very similar to TCP, we want retransmissions, we want connectivity to resume if there was a temporary glimpse. This is often being seen or being referred to as retries. Then we want layer seven traffic management. So we want layer seven load balancing. We want to be able to load balance based on HTTP headers, um, host name, um, request based load balancing, and so on. We want this for HTTP, gRPC, and other layer seven protocols. Then we want identity based security. We want mutual authentication. We want to be able to uh, validate the identity of services or, or allowing services to authenticate each other. We want observability and tracing. We want to see um, on the request level what requests are being shared or being sent between um, services. And we want to not do this on the network level, but actually, again, on the layer seven level where we can see API calls, HTTP requests, HTTP responses. We want to see HTTP uh, return code. We want to see the latency. We want to see the entire service map, what services are talking, talking to each other, and so on. And then very importantly, and that actually brings us to the next um, concept, we want this transparently. Because if you look how this was done in the past, like the desire to have this functionality was not new. In the past, this was done by building this functionality directly into the applications. I've, I've given an example here where you may have a Python app and a Go app, and you would essentially um, write service mesh functionality and, for example, link that into the apps with via a library and then do retries, do TLS for mutual authentication, and so on. But that required you to essentially modify all your apps. And even worse, if you were using lots of different frameworks for your applications, you had to use a different service mesh library for every language framework that you were using. This is why the sidecar model was introduced, which essentially moved this library, this mesh library, this functionality into a sidecar, which means that we no longer had to um, use a, um, a, a language specific um, mesh library, but we could actually use a sidecar proxy and keep our applications unmodified. This is this picture essentially where we see that the sidecars are now injected and all the, the, all the service communication is going through a sidecar as it leaves the application and before it enters the application on the other side. What we are proposing with Cilium Service Mesh is the following. We want to actually get rid of the sidecar proxy. We don't necessarily want to get rid of the proxy. We're, we're actually are huge fans of Envoy. Uh, hello, Matt. <laughs> You've done a great job creating Envoy. Uh, Envoy has been integrated with Cilium since many years. So quite a bit of functionality in Cilium is implemented via Envoy, a combination of eBPF and Envoy. What we don't necessarily like is one sidecar proxy per app or per pod. So what we are providing with Cilium Service Mesh is essentially very similar to how um, names, namespacing technology and, and other things that are are, are clearly part of the kernel uh, and have built the foundation for containers. We want for service mesh um, to also essentially become part of the operating system and be transparently available without requiring to run additional sidecar proxies. So this picture, I think, demonstrates this well. We want to make service mesh as transparent as, for example, TCP is today or as uh, CPU, C groups are today or as namespacing technology is today. Um, and, and we see service mesh as a founding block for containers, just like other namespacing technology as well. This means that from a, from a integration perspective, it will look something like this, 
like you will have a service mesh that essentially sits as a part of your network stack, as part of your operating system stack, essentially just above TCP. So we see service mesh as an extension of TCP. TCP is kind of the old school service mesh. It also has some security functionality. It has retransmissions, which was groundbreaking when it was introduced. And service mesh is like, similar functionality, but adapted to microservices technology and to cloud native infrastructure as we need it today. The reason why we want to do that is because injecting a sidecar is incredibly expensive. So this is a picture that shows um, how a sidecar needs to be injected when it runs separately as a user space proxy. So we have to essentially do a, um, a so-called transparent network injection and have to pass through the network stack multiple times multiple times. This comes at a pretty high cost. If we go back and we see kind of the, the difference, um, if we do, if you provide similar functionality, but directly in eBPF, we can see that from a performance perspective that has a massive benefit. So the, the yellow here is a proxy-based infrastructure that uses sidecar injection to provide L7 visibility. Uh, blue is the baseline, no visibility at all. And red is an eBPF-based uh, HTTP visibility library that, for example, provides open telemetry tracing data. And that is incredibly powerful because all of a sudden we can get this visibility data without, without, without introducing a lot of overhead. And before we leave it off, um, I wanted to show kind of the other difference, which is the overhead overall. So this picture tries to show the footprint that um, essentially happens when we run a sidecar. So this is the view of one node, and it's assuming that we have three, 30 pods running. These are the, the blue boxes, right? In a sidecar model, we'd also have to run 30 sidecar proxies. These are the, 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 the green boxes. So you can see essentially half the, 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 the containers running, at least half the containers running will be sidecars. Whereas in a sidecar free model, when we make this part of the operating system and run one proxy per node, or maybe one proxy per namespace, we can actually talk about a variety of different granularities uh, to uh, how many proxies we, we want to run. We can heavily reduce the footprint, the memory and, and CPU footprint um, of the service mesh.